Hey guys, and welcome back to Amanda's Favorites. Today we're gonna do a video that's fun for me. We're gonna go through my daily planning and like what it has morphed into lately, where I am right now with it. Daily planning, I would say, has never been a problem for me. That's something that's easy for me to change. It's easy for me to try new things. And basically, I just like to use at this point whatever makes me happiest, whatever fits the best with my lifestyle in whatever season I'm in. And I just go with the flow because I do not plan ahead in my daily planning. And so therefore, it's easy for me to switch out to different things. It's unlike my weekly planning where I plan very far ahead and I have to go through and rewrite a whole bunch of things in a planner if I'm switching out planners. So I do not switch out my weekly planner often. But my daily planning, I switch as some might say as the wind changes, but not really that often. I switch as I just, I get an inkling and I want to. So let's talk about where I started when I started this channel. When I started this channel, I was in Emily Lay. So this is my 2017 Emily Lay. This was actually my third Emily Lay daily. So this was my third one, the 2017 calendar year one. I did not keep my previous two, so I couldn't show them to you because I did not keep my planners until I started this channel, which was in March of 2017. So I started out 2017 and I had my normal planning system going that I had for the past two years. Because honestly, I wasn't switching up my planning a lot until I started this channel. So I was in my Emily Lay and I would use the monthlies to just take notes on because I never filled out my monthlies in here. Because in my daily book, you know, I didn't need my monthly filled out. I had my monthly filled out on my wall calendar, which was basically like my guiding light for big events. And I didn't need to refill it out in here. So... If you want a full review of Emily Lay, I have full reviews on my channel. I have a whole daily planner playlist if you want to check that out with all the daily planners I've reviewed or used. But here we go. Into Emily Lay, and I'm just going to flip through. You can see how I used it. I honestly didn't use the timeline on the left a lot because if you follow me, you know I don't have a lot of timed appointments. And so mainly it would become two to-do lists, kind of divided up however I wanted to divide it that day. It would just basically become two to-do lists. If there was a timed appointment, I would usually write it in, I guess, where it goes. Um, but that's, I didn't leave that whole side blank because a lot of days I had no timed appointments or I would only have one. And so that is how it went. This is what my daily planning was looking like in Emily Lay. I tried not to plan far ahead in my daily in here, even though it was dated. That's the thing that actually messed me up in my daily planning. When I have a daily planner that's dated, I often want to go in and write things far ahead and then things change so much. And since this is basically just my daily to-do list, it would start messing me up because I would start to try to plan my to-dos too far ahead. And that was not a good idea for me, at least. Because there's no way I can know two days from now what my to-dos would be. Because I first have to see what I get done today. And so it was a bad idea whenever I would be tempted, just because everything was already dated out, to go ahead and write in things ahead because it just made everything messier. And at this point in my planning, you can tell I had not decided, decided to go with only one color pen because I hadn't learned yet that seeing all the different colored pens on here really messes me up because it makes my you know eyes visually go around and it makes me think one thing's more important than another if it's in blue instead of black. So now I do all my planning in one color. Either I pick all blue to do in my daily or all black pretty much. And then I use highlighters or other colors to mark those important things. So, and in my weekly planner, I stay all black. All right, but this is what my planning looked like. And I would rarely put any timed event on the monthly calendar. Okay, so this was before I started my channel. As the year went on, you know, it just kept going and it morphed into even messier to-do lists. <sighs> and... 
I like to scratch out in pencil and that is only because I do like to scratch through with a line and because Emily Lay ghosted a lot for me this year in my planner, the 2017, I cannot attest to the 2018 because I don't have that one. But the 2017 ghosted a lot for me and so I didn't want to do black lines through everything because it would just make the next page, you know, have more ghosting. And so that's why, that's where the pencil came in to mark through. I found that I like to write in here. Flares showed up really well in there. Okay, so here's what my to-do list. Some days I highlighted, some days I used flare. I really had no pen system going. It was kind of whatever I grabbed. And it was my daily to-do list. Sometimes I used the whole page like this. And sometimes I wrote the to-dos in two columns. So you can see that. Every day was used differently and just in a different way. Now, when I started my channel, I started having access to a lot of other things. And since I was no longer using Emily Lay, I wasn't using the timed column and then the to-do column. So there was really no reason why I had to stay in Emily Lay. And I guess I was just ready for a change for sure. And one thing that also I didn't love is that Saturday and Sunday is split. And a lot of Saturdays and Sundays, I needed just as much room as I did on my Monday through Thursdays. And so it didn't help me to try to squish everything into a half a day space. And also she uses a big space here Sunday for your weekly prep tasks, which are her tasks. And I don't really need listed on my weekly prep. And even if I wanted to use her tasks, I don't want them listed in there every week because it's kind of things I would do like normally on my own. I don't want something to check off. And that's the same every week, at least for me. And so that took also a big chunk of Sunday, which is a small day space on here. So I was just ready for a change, I guess you could say. And so I morphed out of my Emily Lay sometime, um, sometime around July. Um, or a little bit before I started experimenting with other things. But I will say, Emily Lay, you cannot find prettier covers than Emily Lay. And my thing was, though, I never got to see the cover because being a daily, I would always have it folded over to whatever day I was on next to me at my table spot in the kitchen. And so I could see a little bit of the cover and it was still pretty there, the navy and the gold. And a little bit of the flower design, I do like how it wraps around, but I didn't get to see the prettiness of it every day. So that was kind of sad because just the way my planner is, I didn't need to transport it and I just needed it next to me, showing the one day at a time and then I would flip it for the next day. So um, the pretty cover could not be my only pull for keep using it. But she does have beautiful covers. Her O-rings always function perfectly. And I was always tough on her O-rings. I always flipped my book by grabbing one of these rings, and that's why they stick out further than the other. But her book always slides seamlessly and works like the best. Emily Lay and Get to Work book have, I think, the best O-rings I've ever used. I think those are the two best. So never had any problems, and I used her daily. This was going on my third year. So next, I just kind of morphed into... A notebook because I guess something else I missed in the dated planner was that I did not have room to just write out a weekly list so I was having to do that in a separate spot and there wasn't room in my weekly planner to do that every week either like write a big weekly list let me kind of show you what that might look like like this so in this notebook I was just using this Erin Condren hardbound notebook and this color came free with her pre-orders and my sister did a pre-order and she didn't want it. And so she handed it off to me and that's how I got started loving the Erin Condren hardbound notebooks. So I would do my weekly list here and then I would do weekly appointments here. So it was kind of like a two page weekly spread. And I couldn't do that in my Emily Lay because you know every day was labeled and there was no room for me to kind of be creative and make it my own. So this worked really well for quite a while. My weekly list, my weekly appointments, like my husband's list for the weekend, things I need to remember for my kids to do were down there. So this was a two-page weekly spread I made for myself every week. 
And then as I needed to do's, um, I would go into my dailies. So I would use some stickers in here. I'll show you. Here's another week. Appointments, call on, things I needed to buy, a Home Depot list, my husband's list. So that's kind of how my weekly lists were looking. My weekly list, my husband's list, my appointments, call on, Home Depot, buy from Amazon or look at. Another weekly list right here. Okay, so this was when I was only using it for a weekly left there, when I had already morphed into Inkwell Daily, I think. So let's go back here and I can show you, yeah, what my weeks looked like. So here's week of right here. And then I didn't have a two page weekly spread here. I just had the week of, and then I would go into my days and some days I would take a whole page and some days would only take this far. And so I would just put my next day down here. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and then another week my week list, and this was a two page spread for the same week, my errands, my dated appointments, a little food list, and then we went into the days for that week, Monday, and then somehow I didn't need it the other days and I skipped to Friday, and then it skipped to the next Thursday, and I just kept using that same weekly list because I hadn't finished it. So that is kind of how this planner got used. So here I was just writing my days really big, here it was just Monday was a whole day, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, those were some extra notes. Friday was tiny down here, another weekly list, a Sunday. So you can see how flexible just using a notebook like this or a Leuchtturm is because it's hard bound, you can write on the go. It's smaller and more portable than even a Leuchtturm. It's really lightweight. It has a ribbon to mark your page. You can also stick in a paper clip. And it just, it leaves it wide open to write anything you need to write in here. So I really enjoyed my time in this notebook. And I'm sure I will come back to Erin Condren notebooks at some point. Because using a blank notebook like that is really, it's really flexible. And it's just... It leaves it open for me to change and morph it into whatever I need for that week or that day. Okay, so after Emily Lay, I went into this Erin Condren hardbound. Then I did not switch until I got my Inkwell Press daily. I didn't think I was going to switch out of the Erin Condren hardbound to this. I thought I was just going to get this to do a review for you guys, and I wasn't quite sure how I would feel about it. And I honestly didn't think I would switch, but I thought I would try it out for a few days. And I do have a whole review video on this Inkwell Press daily. So I used it from October 24th to January 29th, about three months worth. And I will flip through these pages as I'm talking about it. One thing I love about the Inkwell Press daily is it's undated. So once again, that's what I like about it. Just like my notebook was undated, so it leaves me empty pages to write whatever I wanted, but it didn't quite leave me to the same list format. So what I was doing is I was tearing these pages out of my Erin Condren monthly planner that if you watched my video on it, if you follow me on Instagram, you know the monthly bound planner from Erin Condren fell apart. And so literally the binding started coming apart. They gave me a credit for it. I did not want another one because I felt like there wasn't anything defective about it. I felt like it was their design that was defective and that it was going to happen exactly the same to another one that I got. So they have a whole bunch of notes pages in the back. So I just started tearing them out because it's really good quality thick paper. And when I went into this Inkwell Press daily, I would make my weekly list on a, one of these. And then I would stick it in this planner kind of sticking up so I could always be looking at it and referring back to it with my days. So kind of like I always had my weekly list right here to look back on as I was planning my days. So here my weekly list was here. And that worked out just fine for the Inkwell Press. Now it wasn't as portable, but my daily list pretty much stays at home. But it wasn't as portable to carry around the house. So this basically stayed at my table spot downstairs. Because my Erin Condren would come upstairs, downstairs, it would come like everywhere with me, if I retired to my bedroom at night, I would bring this to work on my list for the next day. 
and this just kind of became my right hand man. It got quite beat up and it took everything that I gave it and it's still holding together really well. So I highly recommend Erin Condren hard bound notebooks if you want one. She also makes them in dot grid now if you prefer that. But she does have her colored flags on every page and that's something I don't love. I would prefer those to not be there and just be complete lines there personally, but you just have to deal with that if you like this notebook and the paper, so, which I do. All right, so then Inkwell Press Daily. What did I like about this? It's bigger, it took up more room at my table spot, and it wasn't as portable. I did like, though, that you're writing on 140 GSM paper, which feels like a luxury to be able to make your list on every day. You cannot beat their 140 GSM paper in any other planner or notebook that I've ever had. And so it's really fun to write on that paper, you guys, every day for just a list. It feels like it's a luxury and like, wow, how did my life get this good that just for a daily list that I'm going to scribble and is going to be thrown away that I get to write on this luxurious paper. Okay, so I like that it's undated because as I've shown you guys on Instagram, I don't use this on the weekends usually because I am not sitting at my table spot working all day and homeschooling on the weekends. And so my table spot has to be cleaned up so we can all actually, you know, sit down on the weekends and everyone can use it. And so this does not work for my Saturday and Sunday generally. I usually made a Saturday and Sunday list just on an Erin Condren tablet and I showed that on Instagram on Saturday and Sunday, but this worked great for my Monday through Friday. I usually did not use the times for any timed appointments because just like the Emily Lay, I don't have a lot of timed appointments. I would use it for other lists. I did like how the list was divided into immediate, important, and insignificant. That really helped me divide up my day and I didn't have to write it out, you know, on a notebook page myself. It's just, it's already there for me, so it makes me divide up my day that way. I liked how you have just a note section here. I actually liked how it gave you a scorecard for the day because it made me think about the day at the end of the day before I went upstairs to bed. I liked how it asked for today's accomplishments. It made me think, you know, well, what are some of the things that I got accomplished today that made me feel good? Because every day I feel like, you know, I do a million things, but a lot of them I don't feel real accomplished because they get undone so quickly. You know, everything that a mother does, you redo again the next day, basically, or the next week. And so a bathroom doesn't stay clean, you know, a meal doesn't stay there, you have to remake it every day, you know, so on and so forth. Everything you do gets undone and you have to redo as a mom. So thinking about my accomplishments every day made me feel better, even if my same list has to be redone over and over. And then... I liked the three boxes at the bottom because I started using them sometimes if I wanted to jot down my workout, even though I keep track of that in my weekly planner. It just made me feel good to start the day writing that like I already worked out. Made me feel good. I liked having the temperature here. Sometimes I would write the sunrise sunset here as um, one of my subscribers suggested to me because I love to keep track of that. But that's not something I would just check on and write on every single day, write down. So sometimes I would just make a note there. So I really enjoyed my time in this planner. There was not any reason that I needed to leave this planner after three months in it. I love it and I will probably come back to it at some point. It worked really well for me. I love that it was undated. I love the premium paper. I just, I love all of that about it. And I have full review videos on it if you wanna know more about it. And I did not plan ahead at all in this planner and I was not tempted to mess that up and plan ahead because it's not dated. So I love that every day started with a fresh start. And even if one day got so crazy and busy or I made too big of a mess of it, I could just redate this page the same day. And after I'd done like half my list, you know, reorganize and start over. So that's why I really like undated dailies or just a notebook for my daily because that's just kind of how I function. So... When one of my subscribers sent me the Hobonichi Techo Cousin to review, 
so nice and generous of her. She was not going to use it. And she wanted me to be able to review it and use it and just so kind and generous of her to send it to me. So what I started out using this as was, if you watch my journaling video or you follow me on Instagram, you know I started using the daily pages in the cousin as a journal. But as you guys know, I already had a couple journals going this year. And I told myself I was only going to do this until it, as long as it didn't feel like it was being forced, as long as I was enjoying it. And I was enjoying it. And then until about a month in, I think, and I really started feeling like, gosh, you know, my journaling is getting redundant. If you want to see what I'm doing, watch my journaling update um, for the first quarter. And I will be doing a different update every quarter to show you guys how it's going and what I've changed. But I'm doing some lines a day. I'm doing journaling in my special gifted hardbound passion planner. I'm also finishing throughout this year my Erin Condren photo journal horizontal. And so it just, plus I have a personal journal that I pull out whenever I need to write in there. And then I have a spiritual journal for whenever I want to write something in there. So I did start feeling like, yeah, I don't see myself journaling this whole year in here. But there was a lot I liked about the Hobonichi. And so I wanted to try it for my daily planning. And since there was nothing tying me to Inkwell... I said, why the heck not? So in February, I started out with my February month list here in my Hobonichi, and I started doing my daily planning in this Hobonichi cousin. And what I figured out was something that bothered me even more than the ghosting was just the indentions, so the bumpy feel that comes through from any pen that I would use to write in here, because that's the way the Tomei River paper is. If you don't know anything about Hobonichi's, I would suggest going to watch some videos. I do have reviews on this one and I do show it in my journaling video. So the invent indentions from most pens bothered me a lot, even more than the ghosting, because it just made the next page already seem really used up before you even got to it. So I started using, I thought, well, a fine tip pen would leave less indentions. And so I started using the flare, the Papermate flare, that's this dark black. And that seemed to work really well for me because it didn't smear that easily and it didn't leave any indentions. But of course, you still have the ghosting through, which is something that I think might always bother me to some extent, but this paper is kind of like magic. It feels good to write on. You do have to wait for it to dry a teeny bit, but it feels good to write on and nothing ever bleeds through. It goes through, but it does not bleed through. So Tomei River Paper can even take watercolor. It can take all kinds of pens and art mediums, but it will ghost. You will see through, but it will not bleed through. So I started using the Paper Mate Flare, and I was doing my list. What I found out from using this for like a week or two, what I found out was the grids are just really small for me. I don't prefer to write that small. It also makes me fit too much in my day, which I just feel like I already am bad at that, about trying to write too many things down that I can't possibly do. Um, but since it gives me a whole page and it's not like a notebook where I can use the other half for another day, I would just fill in too much. I didn't prefer to write so small. And I would kind of try to do the planning ahead thing too much because I already had my dates in here. And so I would try to write ahead before I got to that day. And that was just never a good idea because it always turned my day into a disaster. And it just, it wasn't really planned out well. But what I did do that worked well is I put any dated appointments or timed appointments right here at the top. And they stood out to me that way. So in that little portion at the top. And then I would just do my list. I ignored the time at all because I was not going by their time on here. And so it just became my daily to-do list. So I love a lot about the Hobonichi, but I just wasn't loving it for my daily planning for those reasons. And because I think I always prefer an undated daily planner. But I did like how I could flip to my weekly section 
and I would write the big events of the week here and I could see that. And I did like how I could flip to my monthly and then I could see the month at the same time that I was on my daily and I didn't have to get up and look at my wall calendar. And so it was just all with me. I liked that too. I really did. And I tried to bring in, you know, like a color that I liked because I think I just don't deal well with like the office look that the Hobonichi has. I need like a color a month to bring in. And so that was my extent to try daily planning in here. And if you want to know what I'm doing with it now, I'm using it more as a journal again. But I decided instead of forcing the journaling, you know, writing about the whole day, I'm just going to write one big event or gratitude that I just loved that day, a blessing, something that stood out, and I'm going to do it in a different color Tombow every single month. So like all of February will be this berry fuchsia color, and then like March I'll probably do a green color if I even have one. Um, I only have a few Tombows. It's just a Tombow brush tip. Uh, they're dual tip markers, and I have absolutely no training whatsoever in lettering, and I don't even try to write this neatly. But the brush tip, when you're just writing quickly and you can write big, just turns out looking pretty good to me. And I think I like this keepsake of just looking back and seeing this one event per day standing out. So I am going to keep going with that, and you will get to see if I continue with it in my journaling update for second quarter. I will be doing a journaling update every quarter and I will be doing a planning update every quarter because people have requested that. So I will be doing that. After getting to play in the cousin, it made me really want to try the English version A6 Hobonichi Techo. So I went ahead and got one. They're about $33 on Amazon or Jet Pins is the easiest place to get them. And I had never had an A6 book before. I knew it might be small for me for a daily. and But I wondered if I knew the grid in the English version was a little bit bigger than in the Japanese version. And also I wondered if it being in English, if I would like it better, which I do. I do. And I like the bigger grid because that's more along the lines of my handwriting. And it has a smaller page, so I thought I won't try to fit in as much. And plus, I just really wanted it to play around in, do a review on, and I just really wanted to try it out. So when I first got it, right away, I started doing some daily planning in it. So right here is where I started. And I can definitely fit in most events of the day, but there was not a good spot for me to write like appointments or things that would stand out because this was a tiny spot up here. So that wasn't really a good spot if I had more than one appointment or big event. And if I just wrote them at the top, it didn't give me as much room because this really is a small page. So that kind of had a problem. Also, mild liners don't work well in here. The ink always seems to smear. But here's my February list. And going into February, like I did write an appointment there. So here's what my daily planning was looking like in here. But once again, I had the same thing as feeling like just, you know, I never felt like my page was clean because there was so much ghosting. And because it was dated, I felt like I was trying to write stuff ahead too much. That's just my own personal problem. And I really felt like I needed a lot of color in here like this, but I didn't want to have like two pens with me and try to write so neat like all the time. That's not how my daily planning is. So I kind of stopped daily planning in here and I moved into my Lloyd Sherm and I will show you that. But what I started doing in here was it's just laying around upstairs, usually near my nightstand. And I just write any list that I'm thinking of because I don't usually bring my Lloyd Sherm upstairs every night with me, my daily list book. So if I just need to make a list, I thought, well, at least if I make them all in here, then I can find my list. And I can use the index at the front. So I've been really liking this. I love the index at the front of all the Hobonichis. So like right here on February 16th, I wrote an Aaron's list. And then I wrote my husband's list. And then I wrote my list. And then I wrote one of my son's lists. Then I wrote a to buy list. It just happens in that week I had a lot of lists to make. And so I can find out, oh, well, where was my last Aaron's list? Or where was my last list for me? 
I can just go look on that date. Oh, February 18th. Okay, that was my last list for me. I can go right to it, and it's always in here for me to look up. And then when I'm, like, done with that and I have a new list, it'll just be on a different page. So, and here's, like, my to-buy list. And it's definitely small enough if I want to bring it around on errands with me or whatnot, too, and to just bring upstairs, downstairs. And the index is what makes it so doable for just putting different lists anywhere in this book. So that's what I'm using it for right now. And it's functioning really well as just like that in-between list book when you kind of need to brain dump and you're thinking of something, especially at nighttime when I'm in bed because that always happens to me. And I can just have it all in this one little book, like all my brain dumps. And then later it can go get filed on whatever day it needs to or whatever grocery list it needs to or whatever daily list it needs to. So that is how I'm using it. I love the index at the beginning. You could totally use this index, like if you're in a work environment, like you could write such and such meeting notes, you know, on this certain day. Or every day could be for your notes instead of your to-do list in like an office type of job. And so then you could denote what those notes were about. Like they were about this event set up or whatever. On March 3rd, I took notes about that. And so then if you ever needed to go back and look, oh, what did we talk about in that event set up or in that meeting, you have it in your index and you can go back onto that certain page and look at it. So although I have not been in an office job environment in many, many years, I could just see myself using it in that type of capacity because I would love to just have all those notes indexed and in one place. Now, I'm not a huge fan of the cover considering it looks like a little Bible type of thing, which is completely fine. I mean, I wouldn't be embarrassed carrying around a Bible, but I'm just saying <clears throat> the look and the feel of the cover is just not aesthetically pleasing to me, I guess is what I'm saying. So if it was something I carried around all the time, especially in an office, I would totally buy a uh, one-star leather cover. So this is what I'm in right now for my daily planning. From this, I am now in this. So you've seen my whole... Um, morph from one thing to another and where my daily planning has gone. Okay. And all this time, you know, I have not switched my weekly planners very much at all. If you follow me, you know that, but this is a one star leather goods cover. I have a full review video on it. Your Lloyd's charm strap can even come through here. I cannot rave about this one star leather goods cover enough. It is handmade in a garage in Los Angeles and made with so much care and it only looks better with time. Like I love all the scratches that I've gotten on it personally because that's what leather does. It just it feels amazing. I absolutely love it. <laughs> and if I had the funds, I would totally be buying one for every single one of my Hobonichis just because I love the feel of it so much. So they make really thin ones for your A6 Hobonichis and for your Weeks. And they make ones for your cousin. Now, technically, the cousin can fit in here because this is um, an A5 size. But they make it without the slit in it. And they make it more custom fit for the Hobonichi. So this one, I do not have the front cover hooked in right now. A lot of people choose not to hook it in and to use the pocket. I have hooked it in before and have not hooked it in. And right now, it's just not hooked in. Um, I think I prefer having it in there, personally. And I will show you guys at the end how to do that if you want to know. But if you're interested in their leather covers, like these, cre these credit card pockets are an option you can add on. And I've talked about how I would not add those on actually again. I wanted to get the option on there because I wanted to show you guys. But I would not add them on because if you want to stick your cover into here then your pages are right on top of the credit card pockets. And if you're writing anywhere near the beginning of your book, then what happens is you can fill those bumps and it messes up your writing. So you would have to leave your cover out in that case if you wanted these pockets, because then the cover protects you from the bumps. So, but once you're midway into your book, you know, I don't think the bumps will matter. But if you're near the beginning of the book, you're gonna need to have your cover out. And that's probably actually why I've I've left the cover out right now. So just that's something to think about if you're getting a Hobonichi cover or if you are getting a Lloyd's Trim cover or anything from One Star, I would not add those pockets in 
personally, unless you really need them for something and you're going to be okay with leaving this out to protect your writing from the bumps. So that's just a tip from me. Okay. Now, this is just a Lloyd's Charm, an older one I've had that I've used for a tons of lists and taking notes. And it really had not one like denoted purpose, but just it's been a lot of notes and a lot of lists in it. And so I decided just to try out my daily planning in it because after all these things, I just thought, well, I've used a notebook before. I've used the Erin Condren notebook and I really just wanted a reason to use this leather cover every single day. I know that sounds, I don't know, trite maybe, but it feels so good in my hands. And when I was using the Hobonichi daily, I forgot to mention, I did put it in here also. And so I just love this leather cover so much. I thought, well, since the Hobonichi cousin isn't working out for me, what about a Lloyd's Germ for my daily list? And that has been working out marvelously, actually. Let me tell you about it. So... I started out here, let's see, and I'm kind of figuring out my system since this is new to me, even though it's very similar to the Erin Condren notebook, it's a little bit bigger and I don't love dot grid as much, but on the Leuchtturm lined notebooks, because I have one for my life book, they write date up here. They actually write the word date and then they actually draw a line. And I don't like having that word date written like in the middle of my header and so yeah, I really wish that wasn't there in the Leuchtturm lined or in the Leuchtturm um, graph gridded ones uh, because I don't do so well with the dots, but I've been doing okay. And I'd rather, I don't want a header written up there. So I don't know that I'll do this every month, but I just thought, well, I might as well write in the main events on my calendar here just because, you know, I can easily flip and see that without like getting up to look at my wall calendar or my weekly planner, which stays on my desk. And my wall calendar is right in front of my desk too. So I just thought I would have that with me even though my main events are in my phone also, but at least my main appointment events are in my phone. So then that's my February events. This is my February task list, so like a monthly list. And I kind of had it divided into to-do, call, errands, online, my husband's list and my son's list. Kind of like I did in Erin Condren. And then I've just been writing the date. Some days I've been writing the weather. I will try to write any big events, like timed events that are happening that day at the top and highlight them so that that can stick out in my mind. And then some days I'll write like my top three that must happen, which is ideally what I would do every day. And then I will just list out the rest of my list. But sometimes I just list my whole list and then highlight like the first three I need to get done. So these are my daily lists just right here. Um, some days I have split my page and then some days I've used, you know, the whole page for that day. Even if there's some extra room. I don't mind that. You know in a Lloyd's term there is ghosting also, but it is not as bad as the Hobonichi and you don't feel the indentions like you do in the Hobonichi. So it's different. Then I just kind of decided I was sick of black pen and I think I started switching to blue in here. But I'm trying to keep it to one pen color because like I said, that's the way my brain works. So then I have my weekly list right here. That's on a whole page and it's kind of divided up. Errands and then my husband's, my son's, what I need to get at Target. So that's my weekly list. And then I have my Sunday, my Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So you can just see kind of how it's looking for me. Saturday, Sunday. See how sometimes I need an entire page for Sunday? Not that I get everything done, but kind of like a brain dump and then also kind of a way to start my next week off as to like whatever I didn't get done that I was thinking of on that Sunday needs to go on my weekly list. Here's my weekly list. I tried to write it bigger so it stood out as I flipped back to find the weekly list. Monday, I just took a small section. So then Tuesday went here, okay, and Wednesday, where we are right now. So that, so far, is how I am using this Lloyd's term. I didn't want to get a new one and start at the very beginning until I tested it in this one that I had room to test it in. 
like I said, that had already been used for so many lists and notes. So my testing so far has worked great. I love it. For right now, I think I will just continue to use this one as long as I have a big chunk of blank room. Um, I'll go back and start at the beginning of the blank room. I started at the end of the blank room, um, just the way I was taking notes in here in case I didn't continue with it. But so far, I'm really liking it because it's just, it's like the Erin Condren notebook when I was using it. And I can make it into whatever I need. It's very versatile and I absolutely love feeling this cover on it every day even though it mostly stays open at my table spot and right where I sit every day but I'm really enjoying it I am thoroughly enjoying it I will say so right now this is where I am in my daily list I honestly don't see myself changing anytime soon because I just love the one star leather cover so much and the Lloyd Sherm is working out for me and I love it and so I think that I will be staying in this for a while, but of course I will keep you guys updated in my quarterly planning videos. So you will know when we get to the second quarter if I'm still in here or not when I do my quarterly check-in for planning. But because my daily system had morphed so much over the past year, because literally the Emily Lay started, you know, a year ago, that's how much my daily system has changed in a year and I just thought I would take you guys through that because I do get questions about that quite a bit. All right, I hope this was interesting to someone or helped someone or just answered some questions. Thanks for watching today and happy planning until next time. Bye guys.